session today. Uh, I think it'll be pretty informative. We'll spend a few a few minutes in the PowerPoint helping kind of lay the groundwork uh, about what's available today with that core uh, and uh, the different reporting solutions that are out there and kind of tackling some of those challenges you guys have every day, uh, trying to do your jobs. Uh, when we think of that, you know, we think about what the process looks like today with Epicor and trying to use our products, our, our Epicor itself. And we know that um, uh, there's lots of different challenges that are part of that, and we hope that uh, we'll be able to describe that for you guys today. You know, this is what we think of as our, our typical uh, data analytics, trying to pull everything in we have from Epicor, uh, whether it's just an Epicor or from other systems, uh, some of those in the cloud, some of those on-premise. Uh, and some of it's just data that uh, we've collected inside of Excel Lab. And of course, there's lots of tools to attack that problem inside of Epicor. And you know, we look at what that looks like today. You know, I like to call up the TLAs, the three-letter acronyms, whether it's AFR or it's EDD or EDA or Excel Connect, right? Lots of TLAs out there. And trying to figure out, you know, which one of those is the solution that um, it is right for a particular part of the organization. Uh, now, Excel Connect, uh, in the past, we've been working with Epicor for the past 10 years, and, and almost one in three Epicor ERP or E10 users today, or E9, are using uh, Excel Connect. And the primary focus uh, for the last, gosh, eight years we worked with Epicor has been with the finance teams and you know, giving people a better solution for creating financial reporting. But uh, starting back with the cloud users, uh, with Epicor Cloud uh, and a couple of years ago, Excel Connect uh, expanded into a, a new offering called Excel Connect 7, which really helps uh, anybody that's trying to work with data uh, in Excel. So obviously the finance teams, that's my uh, uh, preference. I'm a finance and accounting background myself. We're all really comfortable in Excel, but we find a lot of other parts of the organization are using uh, Excel for some type of analytics and reporting as well. So really the focus is um, you have EDD and EDA, uh, both Epicor products are available in AFR as well that you can use. When should we look at Excel Connect? It's when you're using Excel today. Right? So any organization that's using an Excel spreadsheet, we can take and make that much easier and automate it. So when we think about what that looks like in the typical process, whether it's the finance guys, the operation guys, or the sales team, you've got that poor you know, individual that's the super Excel guru that's responsible for putting all the, the, the Excel reports together. Of course, there's lots of different people in the organization that all want their own reports and have their own demands. And we know that there's those tools out there like EDD and EDA and AFR. Um, but today, or even SSRS, that's part of uh, uh, the Epicor product suite for creating reports. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of those are more complicated than the report writers really want to take on. And the, the people that really understand those tools, you know, in the IT departments, um, are really trying to maintain and support uh, their other products that are part of that. So we look at um, what people are using for it today, you're copying and exporting data into Excel. If we can take and automate that, you know, that's what we wanna do. And it's more than just the finance team, of course, um, but anybody that's doing this in Excel today spends upwards of 20 hours per month. So think about how many people in your organization, uh, not just finance, but everybody, sales operations are using uh, Excel in that fashion, uh, and, and, and doing so for a reason, whether it's the format or additional calculations, or what have you. Imagine if I could save 20 hours per month per person that's doing that, what that would mean to the organization. And of course, when you look at Excel Connect 7, and really what that means is giving more users access to business uh, information and making better decisions. So it's more than just automating what you do in Excel. Uh, but taking it a step further and allowing people to really access data that you trust with that single source of information. So like SSRS or like um, a, you know EDD or, or looking up information in Epicor, we're giving you that direct access to information that allows you to uh, drill down, answer questions, and you trust it, right? Because it's still coming from that single source of truth. It's coming from your Epicor system. The difference is, is we presented in Excel, 
uh, a solution that most all of us know how to use and open up, right? It's not terribly difficult. Uh, I can and show you and we'll give you an example of how we do that uh, today as part of our presentation. Uh, and then, of course, the ability to share those reports across the organization. And one of the new features that's part of Excel Connect 7 is that I no longer have to have direct access to the database, which means I can be a remote employee. Uh, I can still drill down and answer questions, but I don't have to VPN. I don't have to come in through a, uh, a remote desktop or Citrix as an example, which can be painful for a lot of us. I know that myself. Of course, we've had again over 2,000 organizations in Epicor today using the solution, and literally they changed their financial reporting piece. Like, so that's where we started, uh, where it, it's a much uh, almost automated process. So let's talk about what we're trying to solve with Excel Connect 7, and that'll help us I've really identify the different types of users that we're trying to do, right? So it's going in and saying, great, um, I've got lots of reports I want to get out to people, uh, but how do I do it easily? You know, whether it's I've got uh, a commission report and I've got 20 different salespeople, how do I automatically distribute those reports out where they get that information? They don't necessarily need to drill down to it, but they need lots of different reports, and I don't want to create, you know, the same format, but have 20 different reports we're sending out to different salespeople, right? So I call that too many reports, too little time. And the Epicor Excel broadcast really automates the, the taking a report template in Excel and generating all those different versions by the department or by location that we want to share and then automatically distributing that out, right? And then, of course, the other two types of users are really the, the, the core uh, group for the Excel Connect 7 product. And those are people that uh, need to answer questions starting with you know, the business users, right? I want to send them a report and they got the questions. Instead of them having to come back to a, an analyst or come back to me and provide additional information, I'm going to provide it embedded in the report where they can drill down to that information, answer their own questions. They're not, uh, they don't have to be directly connected to a database to be able to answer questions, right? Of course, that, that final user, and that's probably a lot of the people on the phone today, especially if you're creating reports, and we call those live users or the report analysts. People creating reports, uh, and we're going to show you how we can save you 80% of that time and really create uh, reports that people are, are going to be able to use and get more information out of. And that, that, that's what the Excel Connect 7 report. So part of the platform when we deliver it, this is what's going to come out of the box. This is what we're going to show so you guys understand what we're presenting and you understand what comes with it. So we provide the, the real-time connectors for those live users. Uh, in the past, where we were limited to just financials, um, now we have more than 150 pre-built connections, and we provide 45 out-of-the-box reports. Uh, so when we implement uh, Excel Connect 7, uh, we're going to also give you 45 reports to help get started. And we already talked about now being able to work offline, uh, not having to have that connection directly back to a database. And then the last piece, this is something we could do in our previous platform, which was create our own connections, uh, but it required an additional developer to the set. Now we give every user the ability to add custom connections where they can create uh, their own connections. Right? We provide 150 of them out of the box, but what if I want to create my own? There's no additional cost for a development tool that's part of the product platform now. So let's jump in and, uh, and show what the product's going to look like. So I'm going to jump into Excel. Now, in my example, I'm in Office 2010. Uh, of course, we can go uh, up to the latest versions uh, that you're using out of Office 365. I think that's 2000, Office 2016. Uh, I started with the oldest, just so everybody's comfortable. Hey, this is how far back we can go. Uh, and I'm demonstrating a dashboard that we created in Excel. Now, I want you to envision I'm working as a business user, so I'm disconnected from the database. I may be on a plane. I don't have an internet connection. But I'm still able to open up this report, right? Uh, someone has shared it with me. Uh, it has embedded data in it, a snapshot of the financials for a period of time. It allows me to, to work with that data until I, I get back on it and open up the, the latest version. I still have everything I can work with. So when I want to look at the next period, I can change it, go to period six, it's going to update, and that report updates because we have embedded the data behind the scenes for people to be able to use. 
Now, even as a business user, this is where it's a little bit different than what we did in the past where we had to report riders and report viewers. Um, now we have live users, which have 150 connections, and we have remote users, which are the business users, but they all have the ability to go in and modify and, and work with reports. So even as a, as a remote user, um, I'm working with the embedded data. I want to see period six. I want to see the report updated. I can change it and bring that information in. But, and if I want to see it over six periods, still modify the report. So now where our drill down users in the past, they couldn't change anything, they couldn't modify the reports. Here I can update the report in my heading. I just need to copy here. <clears throat> right. So now I'm looking at six periods of information, or five periods of information in this case. All right. And if I want to look at the next five periods, I can change the drop down and it updates and shows for the next five periods. And we'll make it six periods with it. That's an annual view. The concept being, though, is that we want people to be able to use the information to be able to modify the report to what they need to look at. So maybe I want to look at the first six months versus the second six months. We want the business users, the end users, to have access to that information, the end users to really be able to, to analyze and, and drill down to the detail if that's a business user's need. We call that self-service reporting. It's kind of that new buzzword out there that people use, uh, and it helps us really do our jobs better so that when we look at trends now, instead of looking at one period, I'm looking at six periods, being able to right-click and drill down to the detail. So now as a business user, I've opened up a report, I've changed the period, I've modified the report to better enable me to identify trends, and then I've drilled down to the detail to now have to act on that, right? And I've done all of this disconnected from the database. Of course, um, if I was a live user, I'd still have direct connections to the data as well. But imagine all the different types of reports we can set up and distribute, right? And we also talked about the one to many using the broadcast solution, where in this example, I've got a rolling 12 month, but I've built it across multiple divisions. So in this case, I've got four different divisions and a summary. Imagine I can take this one template and the Excel broadcast solution will automatically open up this report and generate the five different versions of it for me. So now I don't have to have those, you know, that 20 different tabs in my workbook. Uh, when I'm looking at financial information or sales information. So imagine now I have fewer templates to work with, which allow easier report management. I can share that information with people outside the firewall that still have the ability to drill down and, and get access to information to better answer questions and do their jobs. Now, of course, we talked about, you know, for the live users, now let's talk about a live user as the report builders. Um, having all those ex extra connections, right? And so I'm going to kind of condense some over here. So we laid it out, much like we did on the previous version at the core ERP, but now instead of by you know, GL module, we actually did it by operational areas uh, to try to mimic what you guys might see in your Epicor instance, right? So when I open up financial management, I can see all the different types of connections we have, whether it's AP, AR, GL, et cetera. And now you see we do the same for material and production and sales, et cetera, giving us now to do more than just financial reporting, but to offer uh, different types of reporting to the different operational areas. And then when we go to create reports, I can simply do what we did before. I'm going to go in and just grab a sample here. And I'm going to create a report. Uh, what do I need to be able to connect back to the database? Well, this is the beauty of the Excel Connect 7 solution is that I don't have to be a SQL expert, right? I don't really have to understand data structures to create reports, whether it's financial or in sales or operations. Uh, in my example, for GL or for financial information, I want to know what's coming back by company, year and period. And I want to know a range of accounts. Now, in this case, I've hard-coded uh, the accounts. Normally, we would store those as a, as a property, as a chart of accounts that I can maintain in one spot, so I'm not doing it by report. But in my example, I just want to keep it simple for so you guys can kind of understand how we would create reports as a, as a, uh, a report builder or a live user. 
Uh, I can go in, use my menu on the left-hand side. I'm doing financials. Uh, I want to bring back general ledger information. Uh, we're bringing back balances, right? And you see that we've pre-built all the different functions to help us access information, like month-to-date net, quarter-to-date, year-to-date. Right? In my example, I'm doing a month-to-date, so I'm going to drag and drop that over. That's going to prompt me with a menu, and I'm going to Shuffle some stuff around my screen, give me a little more screen space so you guys can see everything. There we go. So now you can see where we've brought out back uh, a, a formula editor allows to tell us where the data is coming. It's coming from that query or P, what we're returning, what we're going to do with it, sum up, and return that in month to date. And it has pre populated filters. Now I can add additional filters to this as well, but we give you a starting point to help make it easier. And so to return information, I'm going to go in and say, hey, great, what company, what year, what period. Uh, I'm not using book ID in this case, but I'm going to use our, our natural account, which is segment value one. Uh, but I'm going to make it a greater than 4,000 and less than 4010. I'm going to pull back a range. So my database, my natural account is in the first position or segment value one. So I'm just going to do greater than or equal to 4,000. Now I'm going to do some little Excel stuff, which means I'm going to kick out the dollar sign after the column. So if I copy that formula down, it'll move. And I, of course, dropped it in my book ID. So I'll, let me try that for time. There we go. That'll help us. And even when I make a mistake, it's pretty quick to recover. So now I've highlighted that I want to bring back anything greater than or equal to 4,000 on my natural account. Uh, I can copy the filter and do a less than or equal to 4010. Check out my dollar sign there so I can copy the formula down. So now I've done everything I wanted to do. Uh, I can even save this filter if I don't have any additional formulas or if I wanted to add an additional one. But the point is now we can save it. I don't have to redo that the greater than or the less than each time I want to use it. Uh, and when we're ready to, to put that formula in, just click OK. Tell me where we want to put it. And it's going to return the information. And so in our example, we have uh, a negative return because it's a credit balance. Um, I can add a simple calculation to reverse that times negative 1. Now that's presenting the formula the way I want. Now if I paste it down, just copy. Even I can do that in Excel, copy and paste, bring back information. I'm going to do the rest of the report that way. Picking out the reversing entry once I'm no longer returning revenue accounts. We'll finish it up. Uh, now I want to take the same thing and do it for a single account. I'm going to open up Excel Connect uh, and get my formula editor out of our Excel toolbar. And now I just need to delete the additional filter and change it to an equals. So I've agreed with that. And we have our new format. And copy it down, just like we did earlier. So very quickly, I've built the report out. I'll take up over the negative number, reversal, as an example. The nice thing is, is I only have to do this one time. And then when we're at it, you know, ready to do the sums, we're going to do the same fun, exciting Excel stuff we do all the time, right? That's the exercise. <clears throat> if I change the period, 
the numbers update. And those are live data. That's coming directly from my Epicor database. And when I'm a live user, I can go in and say, great, I can still drill down like I did before. Let's drill down our advertising, right click, go down. And you can even ask questions like, how old is this data? Do I want to refresh it right now before I drill down on it? Uh, do I want to drill down to the detail level or to the balance level? Lots of options uh, that we can use uh, to drill down to. And when we drill down, we'll go down, execute that new drill down, and that's all the transaction detail coming back from those accounts that we wanted to look at. So what we wanted to demonstrate, of course, is what we were doing before with financials. Also demonstrate what we can do even as a, a remote user when we're disconnected from the database. Uh, but now we want to address a couple of other areas so that we're not just talking about financials but now beginning to look at you know the of course receivable side of it or the sales analysis side because imagine now if i've got access to that data and we want to do additional analysis looking at it over an annual period of time being able to incorporate a direct connection to the database uh, using different features in excel to like conditional formatting to help us identify you know, the largest months that each one of our salespeople have. Uh, but now, when we go to drill down to that information, it really, hey, Penny Lane had uh, a great August. Do I think she'll be able to repeat that for the next year? Right click, drill down, and do the analysis directly as a business user. Well, I can see it's just one particular company that bought all that. And when I scroll across, I can see it's one particular part number. Uh, this, that the part that made up that sale or one particular transaction. So am I comfortable that that's going to take place this next year? Less than the information we can begin to do some predictive uh, analytics, help us decide that gosh, do we need to make sure we call that contact or that company ahead of time? Right. So now demonstrating on the financial side what we can do, uh, also demonstrated some additional analysis points uh, we generate uh, looking at other data outside of uh, the financials. Uh, and to give you an idea of the type of reports we include, uh, I'll show the, what we include as in 45 reports as a part of that. So I'm going to open up a, a report example. So when we look at the, the reports that are delivered with the product, uh, we deliver some dashboards to help get you started uh, the, on the GL side. Uh, financial side, GL reporting, AR, et cetera. And then we can get in the operational side, material management, production management. The different starting points to help you guys get started. And all of these are delivered with the product, right? Now I want to use one more example where we're going to focus completely outside the financial world and really spend some time looking at what we could do uh, on, on, on one area that's near and dear to me, which is the sales side of it. Now, this is something we work at internally uh, uh, with our sales team and trying to provide commission information, uh, demonstrating not just XL Connect uh, 7, but also the XL Broadcast product that will help us uh, take and do more of what we're trying to uh, demonstrate uh, with XL Connect and sharing more reports across a larger organization. So I'm going to close my example here, and we'll start with another report. Now, I like to save my Excel reports as templates. That way, no one's ever going to mess with the master report. I'm going to open up my templates. And it opens up a report for me. Someone's created for me, and I'm going to refresh the data against the database so I know it's instantaneous. I'm just going to go out. There we go. So that report is as of just moments ago. I'm doing a full analysis of all my customer sales for a period of time. I've added some Excel slicers to help me better analyze the data because uh, I have multiple salespeople. Uh, so if I want to look at just Hayuma, I can look at just Hayuma and I can see this this top account. Uh, and if I want to go in and drill down to that, I can even go in and look at Edwards, their average sale, their largest sale, and their total sales for the period of time. Uh, I'm going to drill down on that. 
And when I go look at it, it's going to give me all that transaction detail all the way down to the part number. All right. So now I can begin to look and see exactly what they're purchasing and, and see a, a history uh, for each one of my salespeople. Hey, that's great. So now I've looked at my salespeople, uh, each individual, and I've added some slides for so home and look at particular parts even, right? Product groups. And look by product group. But the whole point is, is presenting the data real time in Excel, utilizing all the Excel skills uh, power to make better use of the data. Now, I've even created this report where if I want to look at just individual salespeople, even at the customer level, changing it in the report updating to only show just how you use customers on the left hand side, but still give me the full analysis as part of my slicers on the right. So now as a sales manager, I've taken, opened it up, and looked at all this information. The problem for me is now I want to share this with my sales team so that they can do more and do their jobs better. How do I easily do that? Now, in this case, I only have three salespeople, so it's not terribly difficult, but imagine an organization that has 20 or 30 or 40 different salespeople trying to create and manage all those different reports, right? So I'm going to go in and say, I want to go out and broadcast those reports out. So now I'm going to go open up and use Epicor Excel Broadcast, which is going to allow me to set up these reports one time, determine exactly what I want to send to them, which tabs, and create a different version for each one of my salespeople. And they're going to get their report, and it's only going to contain their information, right? Because I don't want to share. Um, the data for everyone to an individual salesperson. I want them just to get their information. So now I'm, I'm taking a report and creating a subset of those reports with different data in the same format, though. And I'm allowing us to do it automated so that I don't have to do this as a, a, a bigger process. It's literally open the report up, refresh it, and say, great, now I want to run it again. And when I run it, it's going to go out and refresh the data one more time. It's asking me if I want to save my version. I'm, yep, I'm going to save that version too. Yep. So now it's going to go out, refresh the data against the database, generate those three different reports for the three different salespeople. And in this case, I send it out to a SharePoint file, right? So the sales team always opens their, their report from the same point. That way they know they've got the, the most up to date information. Now, Excel Broadcast lets me schedule this, so I didn't have to run it manually. In this case, I did, so I wanted you guys to see it, but I could have also scheduled that as well. Set the schedule and have it run. All right? Have it run every day at 4.15 a.m. Uh, so each time the salespeople come in and open the reports, they see the latest information. And what do the reports look like? Uh, let me open one of those up for you so you guys see what we just generated. I'm going to go out to my folder here or my broadcasted. All right, so I just sent those out. There's Scott's and there's Penny and there's Hyena, so I can look at each different one. I'm going to open up Penny's and I open up her report. It just has her information. You see where the other two salespeople are grayed out, so she doesn't have access to the other information, but she still has all the information she has uh, to be able to make decisions. Now, Penny is operating as a, as a remote user, so she actually has a license of our product. Now, I could have just sent this to her as a static report where she just got the numbers. But when she has access to our product and the data, she can now say, hey, that's great. I want to look at Dalton, my largest customer, right click, drill down. And now Penny also has the same ability to drill down to the data uh, for that particular customer, right? And so now she can uh, do additional analysis and help her do her job better, right? So, and she only has her information. She doesn't have anybody else's. So now I've taken sales reporting beyond just providing you know, the, the report itself, uh, but also given us the ability, if we send it as a, as a, a, a full Excel Connect report, and uh, in this case, Penny does have a business, uh, a business user or Excel Connect remote user license, She's able to drill down as well. Now, I could have distributed it as a values only report or a PDF where she has the information, but really being able to drill down and, and dig into the detail as a salesperson, uh, that makes it much more powerful tool set. 
depending on the need, right? So you can choose one way or the other. Um, and I can, I don't have to make it a permanent decision. I can actually change how I send it out uh, based on the person. Uh, so that was Penny's report. Let's open up uh, one more example so you guys can see that the, it did actually change. Um, we're not going to save Penny. We're going to go and open up Scott this time. You see Scott has a much smaller customer grouping. And Scott's only seeing his information. So just giving you kind of a visual of uh, what uh, you could expect uh, creating a report uh, and then also using the Excel broadcast product to help send that out. Right? So with that, I'm going to pop back into our, our PowerPoint slide, which is going to help us identify some of the questions you guys might have and really leave it open um, for what we want to look at uh, or answer questions for, I'm sorry. Right. So what is the new platform offer? A lot more connections, right? 20 different modules, the ability to connect to other data. One of the things I always forget, and this is, you know, of course, I use the product all the time, so I don't think about it, is training. Uh, the new uh, Excel Connect includes training so that uh, it's available through Epicor University so that uh, you can purchase the product, get up to speed on it, and then work with your partners. Instead of the partner working with you to show you how to copy and paste and use a function, partners can really help you develop the reports and then take uh, Excel Connect to the next level or help you develop new connections. Instead of focusing on just pure training, we put that up on Epicor University. There's no additional cost for it. It's part of the platform now. Uh, we also added a security model. Uh, when we were financial only, it was pretty straightforward. You know, the finance team had access to the finance data. Now that we have 20 different modules and 150 different connections, we've added a security model so that I can decide who gets to see what, uh, which is important, right? I always tell the joke, the first time we showed this, our development team showed our new platform to Epicor. You know, the first thing the Epicor team says, oh my gosh, you're showing payroll information. You can't do that. Everybody can see payroll. Of course, I kind of I laugh because our development team said, oh, you don't want to see payroll? We'll take payroll out. I'm like, no, no, no. There's definitely groups that need to see payroll data, but not everyone. So we, instead of taking payroll out, added the security model. So we didn't have to be straightforward. Uh, the 45 people reports as well. Now, what's nice is in the past, we always sold all the different connectors and developers and all this as a separate platform, itemized. Now we include it all as one bundle under our starter bundle, uh, which saves you almost 40% uh, in the way you buy the product. So instead of selling each price individually, uh, you know, we now have the number seven, you know, Whopper meal uh, at Burger King, right? You don't have to buy each piece individually. It's all bundled together, all right? So the three takeaways we want you guys to take away from it is you know, you've got, uh, I want everyone that's on the call, think about how many different operational areas in the organization are using Excel today. And there's a reason why they do it, right? And I'm not saying, you know, uh, instead of throwing Excel out, because that's the first thing people say is, well, quit using Excel, we'll solve all the problems. Well, there's a reason why we're using Excel. Sometimes it's because we need the flexibility to add calculations to the information or to do modeling or formatting or any number of reasons. So instead of throwing out Excel, instead make it better when we solve that universal problem, you know, trusting the data uh, and not having to spend all that time to read those reports each time. Uh, because uh, we provide a, a real-time connection or we provide real-time access to data in a format that everybody understands, this is a solution that everybody can pick up and use almost right away, especially when you think about the business user. Open a report, drill down on something I have a question about. Right? And of course, the last piece is anytime people have better access to information, you know, we're going to make better decisions. So it's going to help the organization. Uh, some of the more common questions we run into uh, and this is where when you guys um, uh, have questions, it's a good time to start chiming in uh, through the chat. <clears throat> we want to make sure we address those. But uh, we don't require any additional uh, hardware, right? It's, it's in-memory caching. Uh, we don't create a data warehouse. Uh, if you're running through cloud, uh, we provide a direct cloud connection as well. Uh, but the beauty of it, everything is pre-built. So when we go to do the installation, uh, it installs in less than a day. 
right? Our, our uh, installation teams can typically do an install in about two hours, uh, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud for us. Right? And then, of course, you know, now how has it changed from what we did in the past? You know, no more longer just financial. And, and now everybody can create their own connections, their own functions as well. So it's much more flexible than what we did in the past. And like everybody already has today, we've got all these Excel reports. I hate to throw the, bath, the baby out of the bathwater, right? We can leverage those reports you have. Uh, what we find is most people spend more time trying to format it and set up the, you know, the, the layout of the report than they ever spend trying to create uh, the, the connection with Excel Connect. So we can use that formatting and, and use the, the Excel uh, uh, report that you already have to help you get started. Of course, we provide those 45 reports as well. Right. And then when you guys have the, 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 the most important questions is, you know, what is my next step? Or what do I need to do to, to get more information on Excel Connect? And of course, the questions, please feed those to the MIS. Uh, our partner uh, group is a great team uh, to help uh, support and install and, and get to help you get the most out of the products that Epical offers, uh, including Excel Connect Seller. Okay. And I want to thank uh, MIS for inviting me. It's, they're a great group. I've worked with them for the last 10 years, um, almost a decade now. Crazy, right? Um, that is crazy, Pete. Thank you so much. You did a wonderful job of showing Excel Connect. I always learn little tidbits from presentations like this. So whether you see it five times, you know, 500 times, you always learn a little bit more every time. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We don't have any questions, but you know how to reach us. You can either reach Pete directly or contact P. Rubley at mis-c.com. Additionally, we will reach out to all of you individually to see um, if there's anything we can follow up on. Thank you so much for your time today, and we look forward to catching up with you all again soon. Take care.